I ate another bite of the dumpster Domino's pizza. Actually, Domino's pizza sucked a little less when you got it for free. Liam's sleeping bag was warm and welcoming after a long, emotionally exhausting day. Anne would have made contact with Barbara by now. She'd have the video and the picture. I'd call her in the morning and find out what she thought I should do next. I'd have to come in once she published, to back it all up. I thought about that as I closed my eyes, thought about what it would be like to turn myself in, the cameras all rolling, following the infamous Mikey into one of those big colonnaded buildings in the Civic Center. The sound of the cars screaming by overhead turned into a kind of ocean sound as I drifted away. There were other tents nearby, homeless people. I'd met a few of them that afternoon before it got dark, and we all retreated, the huddle near our own tents. They were all older than me, rough-looking and gruff. None of them looked crazy or violent, though, just like people who had had bad luck or made bad decisions or both. I must have fallen asleep because I don't remember anything else until a bright light which shined in my face, so bright it was blinding. That's him, said a voice behind the light. Bag him, said another voice, one I'd heard before, one I'd heard over and over again in my dreams, lecturing to me, demanding my passwords. It was severe haircut woman. The bag went over my head quickly and was cinched so tight at the throat that I choked and threw up my friggin' pizza. As I spasmed and choked, hard hands bound my wrists then my ankles. I was rolled onto a stretcher and hoisted and carried into a vehicle up a couple of clanging metal steps. They dropped me into a padded floor. There was no sound at all in the back of the vehicle once they closed the doors. The padding deadened everything, except my own choking. Well, hello again, she said. I felt the van rock as she crawled in with me. I was still choking, trying to gasp in a breath. Vomit filled my mouth and trickled down my windpipe. We won't let you die, she said. If you stop breathing, we'll make sure you start again. Don't worry about it. I choked harder. I sipped at air. Some was getting through. Deep, racking cough shook my chest and back, dislodging some more of the pizza. More breath. See, she said, not so bad. Welcome home, Mikey. We've got somewhere very special to take you. I relaxed onto my back, feeling the van rock. The smell of used pizza was overwhelming at first, but as with all strong stimuli, my brain gradually grew accustomed to it, filtered it out until it was just a faint aroma. The rocking of the van was almost comforting. That's when it happened. An incredible deep calm that swept over me, like I was lying on the beach and the ocean had swept in and lifted me as gently as a parent, held me aloft and swept me out onto a warm sea under a warm sun, after everything that had happened, I was caught, but it didn't matter. I had gotten the information to Barbara, the news reporter. I had organized the XNet. I had won, and if I hadn't won, I had done everything I could have done, more than I ever thought I could do. I took a mental inventory as I rode, thinking of everything that I had accomplished, that we had accomplished, the city, the country, the world was full of people who wouldn't live the way DHS wanted us to live. We'd fight forever. They couldn't jail us all. I sighed and smiled. She'd been talking all along, I realized. I'd been so far into my happy place that she'd just gone away. I heard her again, smart kid like you. You'd think that you'd know better than to mess with us. We've had our eye on you since the day you walked out. We would have caught you even if you hadn't gone trying to your journalist traitor. I just don't get it. We had an understanding, you and me. We rumbled over a metal plate and the van shocks rocked, rocking and then the rocking changed. We were on water, heading to Treasure Island. Hey, Angie was there. Daryl, too, maybe. The hood didn't come off until I was in my cell. They didn't bother with the cuffs at my wrists and ankles, just rolled me off the stretcher and onto the floor. It was dark, but by the moonlight from the single tiny high window, I could see that the mattress had been taken off the cot. The room contained me, a toilet, a bed frame, a sink, nothing else. I closed my eyes and let the ocean lift me. I floated away. Somewhere far below me was my body. I could tell what would happen next. I was being left. I knew what that was like. It had happened before. It was humiliating, like being a baby, that I'd survived. I laughed. The sound was weird and drew me back into my body, back to the present. I laughed and laughed. I'd had the worst they could throw at me, and I'd survived it. I'd beaten them, beaten them for months, showed them up as chumps and despots. I'd won. Ocean swept me away. When morning came, two efficient, impersonal guards cut the bindings off of my wrists and ankles. I still couldn't walk. When I stood, my legs gave way like a stringless marionette's. Too much time in one position. The guards pulled my arms over their shoulders and half dragged and half carried me down the familiar corridor. The barcodes on the doors were curling up and dangling now. 
attacked by the salt sea air. I got an idea. Angie, I yelled. Daryl, I yelled. My guards yanked me along faster, clearly disturbed, but not sure what to do about it. Guys, it's me, Marcus. Stay free. Behind one of the doors, someone sobbed. Someone else cried out in what sounded like Arabic. There was a cacophony, a thousand different shouting voices. They brought me to a new room. It was an old shower room, with the shower head still present in the molded tiles. Hello, Mikey, severe haircut said. You seem to have had an eventful morning. She wrinkled her nose pointedly. Uh, I did, she, she, I said cheerfully. You should try it. Maybe we should give you a bath then, she said. She nodded and my guards carried me to another stretcher. This one had retaining straps running its length. They dropped me onto it and it was ice cold and soaked through. Before I knew it, they had the straps across my shoulders, hips, and ankles. A minute later, three more straps were tied down. A man's hands grabbed the railings and my head and released some catches. And a moment later, I was tilted down my head below my feet. Let's start with something simple, she said. I craned my head to see her. She turned her de to a desk with an Xbox on it, connected to an expensive looking flat panel TV. I'd like you to tell me your login and password for your pirate party email, please. I closed my eyes and let the ocean carry me off to the beach. You know what waterboarding is, Mikey? Her voice reeled me in. You get strapped down like this and we pour water over your head, up your nose and down your mouth. You can't suppress the gag reflex. They call it a simulated execution. And from what I can tell from this side of the room, that's a fair assessment. You won't be able to fight the feeling that you're dying. I tried to go away. I'd heard of waterboarding. This was it, real torture. And this was just the beginning. I couldn't go away. The ocean didn't sweep in and lift me. There was a tightness in my chest. My eyelids fluttered. I could feel clamminess on my legs and clammy sweat in my hair. My skin itched from the dried pizza. She swam into view above me. Let's start with the login, she said. I closed my eyes, squeezed them shut. Give him a drink. I heard people moving. I took a deep breath and held it. The water started as a trickle, a ladle full of water gently poured over my chin, my lips, up my upturned nostrils. It went back into my throat, starting to choke me, but I wouldn't cough, wouldn't gasp and suck it into my lungs. I held on to my breath and squeezed my eyes harder. There was a commotion from outside the room, a sound of chaotic boots stomp, stamping, angry outraged shouts. The dipper was emptied into my face. I heard her mutter something to someone in the room. Then to me, she said, just a login, Marcus. It's a simple request. What could I do with your login anyway? This time it was a bucket of water, all at once, a flood that didn't stop. It must have been gigantic. I couldn't help it. I gasped and aspirated the water into my lungs, coughed and took more water in. I knew they wouldn't kill me, but I couldn't convince my body of that. In every fiber of my being, I knew I was going to die. I couldn't even cry. The water was still pouring over me. Then it stopped. I coughed and coughed and coughed, but at the angle I was at, the water I coughed up dribbled back into my nose and burned down my sinuses. Coughs were so deep they hurt, hurt my ribs and my hips as I twisted against them. I hated how my body was betraying me, how my mind couldn't control my body, but there was nothing for it. Finally, the coughing subsided enough for me to take in what was going on around me. People were shouting, and it sounded like someone was scuffling, wrestling. I opened my eyes and blinked into the bright light and craned my neck, still coughing a little. The room had a lot more people in it than it had had when we started. Most of them seemed to be wearing body armor, helmets, Smoke plastic visors. They were shouting at the Treasure Island guards who were shouting back, necks corded with veins. Stand down, one of the body armor said. Stand down and put your hand in the air. You are under arrest. The beer haircut woman was talking on her phone. One of the body armors noticed her and moved swiftly to her and batted her phone away with a gloved hand. Everyone fell silent as it sailed through the air in an arc that spanned the small room, clattering to the ground in a shower of parts. The silence broke and the body armors moved into the room. Two grabbed each of my torturers. I almost managed to smile at the look on Severe Haircut's face when the two men grabbed her by the shoulders, turned her around, and yanked a set of plastic handcuffs around her wrists. One of the body armors moved forward from the doorway. He had a video camera on his shoulder, a serious rig with blinding white light. He got the whole room, circling me twice while he got me. I found myself staying perfectly still, as though I was sitting for a portrait. It was ridiculous. You think you could get me off this thing? I managed to get it all out without, with only a little choking. Two or more body armors moved up to me, one a woman, and began to unstrap me. They flipped up their visors and smiled at me. They had red crosses on their shoulders and helmets. 
Beneath the red crosses where is another insignia, CHP, California Highway Patrol. They were state troopers. I started to ask what they were doing there, and that's when I saw Barbara Stratford. She'd evidently been held back in the corridor, but now she came in, pushing and shoving. There you are, she said, kneeling beside me and grabbing me in the longest, hardest hug of my life. That's when I knew it. Guantanamo by the Bay was in the hands of its enemies. I was saved.